So to start out, before we begin to talk about fertility needs, we need to talk about soil testing in general and, and get some terms straight. So the first thing that when guys talk to me, I think we need to understand about a soil test is a soil test value is an index. It's what is potentially available at the time you took the soil sample. Okay. Secondly, field calibrations with crop response give a meaning to a soil test value. Okay, so if you have a soil test value that calls for a recommendation and it's not calibrated to crop response, it's a number on a piece of paper. So, you know, what is a critical value or range? And basically what the critical value is in soil testing is it separates those sites that respond to fertilizer positively versus those sites that are not responsive to fertilizer. Well, there's basically no single science-based way to come up with that critical value, and they may differ based on soil testing philosophy of each lab that you send that to. For example, this is Mississippi's soil test index for soybeans. On your left-hand side, we have the categorical ranges across the top. We have CEC. In Mississippi, we do take into account the CEC of the soil when we make a soil test recommendation. And generally, in that medium level, we feel that there's a 50% chance that you may observe a response to fertilization. This particular uh, set of indexes is for potash, and we'll spend most of our time talking about potash today. So, Fertilization economics, you know, a couple years ago, 2007, we fell on hard times. Fertilizer price went through the roof. Well, in 2012, in University of Arkansas's Extension Service for fl flood and furrow irrigated soybeans, fertilization with P and K resulted in 18% of the direct production budget. In Mississippi, Extension Service budget for conventional soybeans in a Roundup or conventionally tilled soybeans in a Roundup ready system, that fertilizer budget was 10 to 24 percent of your total direct expense. So to break down that in a little further detail, this is a slide I borrowed from Dr. Slayton showing the University of Arkansas soil test recommendations. So basically what he alluded to me is most of the soil samples that come through the state of Arkansas soil testing laboratory test somewhere in this range below this box. And the most common recommendation generated by the Arkansas system is this one right here. So what does that look like for Mississippi? We have slightly different ranges of fertilizer application rates for both nutrients. And with that, we have a slightly lower total fertilizer cost. So with these soil test indexes, and if we're properly correlated to crop response, we can give you some indication of an expected loss if you do not fertilize soybeans. On the left hand side we have those categorical ranges and on the right hand side we have the expected yield loss and the Mississippi State Fertilizer Recommendation. This data suggests that if you're in the medium category you're going to harvest 92 to 100 percent of your relative yield. Why is this important? This is slide represents the nutrient requirement per bushel of soybean yield, okay? We have N at 5.3 pounds per bushel, but we get most of that through the atmosphere. We don't have to worry about that large cost. If we had to pay for nitrogen for soybean production, we would not be producing soybeans in the Mid-South. Phosphorus, about a half a pound per bushel. The big thing we're wanting to point out is potash, two pounds per bushel. So on a 70 bushel average yield, which most of our growers in the Delta region are able to consistently hit year in and year out now, we're removing a total of 141 pounds of potash per acre. What's very important is this 88 number. We're removing 88 pounds in the seat. So why is it important to Mississippi? Well, this slide shows the USDA's estimates of the fertilized acreage in Mississippi. For soybean, we're putting out 69. Why is that important? What's cotton doing in Mississippi? Cotton acreage is declining. 
we're moving our soybeans on that more highly productive land to try to reach that 100 bushel goal. Okay, based on USDA averages, we're already under fertilizing our soybeans based on average 65 bushel yield. So how do we go about solving this problem? You, you go about it through soil testing. You have routine soil testing. Three years is the cycle that most people say. I think if we're in those highly productive situations, we may need to soil test a little sooner than three years. But we do know that soil test potash in the top four to six inches of the soil is an excellent predictor of soybean yield. So what, is, what does a properly correlated soil test look like? On the y-axis, we have relative soybean yield, and on the x-axis, we have soil test K. And by generating a figure like this, we see the black dots that is sites that are responsive to potash fertilization, and the white dots that are non-responsive to fertilization. So basically what we're saying is around 120 parts per million soil test K. Anything above that, your chances of seeing a response to fertilizer decrease. With this data, we can properly calibrate a rate that you can plug into a variable rate controller if you're wanting to do variable rate, or if you want to reduce your fertilization, we can tell you an expected yield loss level based on the amount of fertilizer you want to put out. We've been hard pressed to find soil test data in Mississippi that's correlated to soybean yield. So with that in mind, we submitted a proposal to the soybean board and they are actively funding updating soil test correlation in Mississippi for P and K. And this is based on our first year of data. We had seven site years in the first year. We lost one site year and taking a similar approach that Arkansas had, we have relative soybean yield on the y-axis and our soil test extracting on the x-axis. So we generate two figures to give our producers the choice. It doesn't matter if you're submitting your samples to a Southern Soils lab or if you're submitting it to Mississippi State, we'll have a recommendation for you. We had very good results the first year. Out of the seven sites we had, we had six harvestable sites, and two of those sites were responsive to potash fertilization, as denoted by the unfilled circles. This figure looks slightly different than the figure that I showed from Arkansas, simply because we don't have the mass of data points to get a good correlation for soil testing, it takes about 35 to 40 individual sites. Looking at the true yields out of the two responsive trials we had in Mississippi, uh, I mean the red site was on the Jack's farm in Humphreys County, and the blue site was on a farm in Bolivar County. And what we observed was an eight bushel yield response in Humphreys County and a 10 bushel yield response in Bolivar County. And both of those yield responses were topping out somewhere in that 120 pounds of K2O per acre range. So what, what does these numbers look like when we get on a, a highly developed soil test that has been continuously updated? This shows the total number of sites that tested in that level within the data set. 100% of sites that test in the low would respond potash fertilization. If you come up to the higher portion of the low level, a 23% yield loss, and in the medium level, we're around 10% yield loss. But again, if you look at this responsive sites, we're, we're highly, still highly responsive to, to fertilization. If you look across the soil test K ranges, the relative yield decreases as soil test K decreases of the untreated control. So what, what you don't want to get into a situation is a situation where you're not applying fertilizer and you're getting down here. So basically getting to the gist of the confidence in soil testing, if you submitted your soil samples to the University of Arkansas lab and they provided you a recommendation, when they recommended K, they were correct 25 of 41 times. When they do not recommend K, they saw a positive yield response eight of nine times for overall accuracy of 66%. Well, if you were playing the lottery and I told you you had a seven out of 10 chance of winning, 
Would you like those odds? I would. So just a little overview, the best thing that we can say is to maintain high yielding soybeans. You need to soil sample regularly and we need to do this before we put any litter out, before we put any fertilization out. And it's also important to soil test behind the same crop in rotation if you are going on a three year cycle. Please remember that fertilizer recommendations are based on a philosophy and all labs have different philosophies. And it's more important to use a history of soil testing rather than a single year.